Notre Dame is 3-0, and largely because it has defensive playmakers at every level. And today, the final play was made by Jalen Elliott. Tim, you're about five yards away from the play that uh, almost turned this game into a nail-biter for Notre Dame when the offense is going to have to rescue them. Yeah, the secondary's playing great. I mean, the safety play, we, we asked Brian Kelly about afterwards. The safety play has been outstanding, including right down there where Lohi Gilman uh, and, and actually every member of the starting secondary made uh, some contribution to that turnover in the end zone. Yeah, I mean, you know, fortunately, they have a very good defense. Not a great defense, as Brian Kelly said. I would agree. I thought that they would get a little bit more pressure uh, on Shermer as the game went on. They only gave up 19 sacks last year, and they've given up three in three games this year. So they're good at that. It's a veteran offensive line. But I really thought they put – when you don't put pressure on Shermer, that's what he's going to do to you. He's going to th throw for – more than 300 yards. And then Notre Dame's offense, as we've seen in each game this year, bogged down after a, a, a quick start, an early start. Obviously, some of those field goals should have been touchdowns and the game would have been, um, wouldn't have been nearly as close. One guy that started fast and finished strong was Tony Jones Jr. by far, his best game in a Notre Dame uniform, 119 rushing yards, I believe, and his two receptions for 56 yards. Both of those catches set up scoring drives for Notre Dame. Yeah, Tony Jones looked like, you know, we joke about it, the guy that we said we saw on the practice field. What we saw was true. He just hadn't brought yeah. it to this stadium in game situations. He did today. I think it was a 118 yards, 56 in receptions, a couple wheel routes that worked effectively mm -hmm. against the Vanderbilt defense. They ran the ball. You know, I mean, you, you got the contribution that you wanted. You had a 100-yard rusher. You had uh, Brandon Wimbush over 60 yards. And you had Jafar Armstrong at 48. But they couldn't sustain it. 96 of the rushing yards, 96 of the 245 rushing yards came in the first quarter. And then it really bogged down until they, they picked up a few more, um, you know, second half yards. Yeah, fortunately, they're able to get some chunk runs because they still are getting stuffed a lot up at the offensive line. I think they were 18 or 19 in a rough count. That just might be the way it is this year because Brian Kelly used the term run to daylight. I thought Tony Jones ran exceptionally well after contact as well. The concern I have for the defense, it, it, was, it was kind of an opposite showing. I thought they would just settle in and handle Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt had 37 yards on their first four drives. None of the rest of their drives were less than 40 yards, so it was really Vanderbilt's offense adjusting to Notre Dame's defense. Yeah, and I think their last seven drives they got in Notre Dame territory, whereas it took them almost the entire first half to get into Notre Dame territory. So the momentum shifted. I think the defense got a little yep. bit tired. The offense bogged down. That's now 19 total points in the second half in three games, and that's not enough. You talk about putting teams away. You're not going to put teams away if you only scored 19 points in the second half of three games. It's a much different atmosphere in the postgame locker room than last week when it felt like they lost when they beat Ball State. I think uh, Brian Kelly kind of starting to convey this message to his team. We are not going to go out, and he said it to us, we are not going to go out and blow people out right now 52-3. to three. We're going to be blue-collar, hard-nosed, grit, and grind-out victories. Well, and, and that's obvious. That's what yeah. they are. That's what we've seen. I, I really i am growing a little weary of this. You know, SEC team beating an SEC team. That SEC team was one and seven in conference play last year. So we're not talking about upper echelon. But you know, I get it. Your offense isn't good enough to sustain what they've started, and your defense is good enough to keep another team that's now 13 out of 16 games under 20 points. Fortunately, it's good enough. But I do think they're getting tired, um, and the back end of the defense is playing great. But they didn't get after Shermer like I thought they would. I didn't really expect Vanderbilt to run very much because that's really not what their mo has been in the last couple of years, and Notre Dame kept them under 100 yards. Well, if you're not going to have an identity, it's better to be 3-0 and while you're looking no for your identity not. and rank number eight in the nation. That's it. Post game, we'll be back with Tim's snap judgments, my notebook, and our game columns tomorrow. For Tim Priester, this is Tim O'Malley, irishillustrated.com.